In the last mini-talk, I introduced the demand for living space in Gotham. Now we tackle the supply of space in Gotham. Again, it is easiest to think of the city being built all at once, and builders delivering exactly the number of homes that will find buyers. Of course, reality is far messier than that, and we'll return to urban dynamics in a later video. Okay, let's start by assuming that from the buyer's perspective, all different homes are identical. But from the builder's perspective, different sites cost different amounts to build upon. Also remember, all the homes are identical, and let's assume that there are two million possible sites for homes in the city. Now, we have two million different building costs. And let's order those costs from the cheapest to the most expensive, because surely the cheap, easy sites will be used first. Once again, we have a bar for each home representing the building cost, perhaps starting at $100,000 and going to $110,000 and $120,000 and so forth. But just like we did for demand, we start smooshing the bars together. Because remember, the number of sites is really big, and the difference between a lot of these sites is going to be really small. And then a curve emerges. It might be a line, but it might also bend. Of course, it has to slope up because we've ordered the sites from the cheapest to the most expensive. And now this thing is called a supply curve. But, I hear you cry, not everyone lives in a single family home in the city. How right you are. So let's think about this slightly differently. Let's think about all the ways you could possibly add an extra living unit into the city, building a single family home, adding a second story to a structure, adding a 50th story to a high rise apartment building. Let's not worry about complications in building, like the fact that it is hard to build a third story without first building a first story, and just assume that you can again figure out the price for each possible additional housing unit. Once again, we order the building costs from bottom to top, and they give us those bars that represent the price of each unit. Once again, we smoosh the bars together, reflecting the vast number of potential building units. And once we've smooshed them, we've got a supply curve for urban space. And it always goes up because you'd always build the cheaper units before you build the more expensive units. We'll spend a bunch of time on the reasons why supply is so much easier in some places than in others. But for now, we'll just note that the supply cost will be a function of construction costs. If it costs more to build in Gotham, then the supply curve will shift upward. If it costs less, then the supply curve will shift down.